Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pet tutorial. We are creating our Fruit Slashers game, right? And last class we introduced the variable velocity y to our game and we're making our banana to move according to our velocity y, right? And our velocity y here starts in 10. So that's why our banana moves up so fast. We can change that number to a smaller number here, like three, for example, then my banana will move slower, right? But for now, I'll just leave 10 here. And today we're gonna be introducing gravity to our game. So how our banana is gonna fall back down, right? So what is gravity? Gravity is a force that keeps pulling us down, right? So whenever we jump, the gravity will keep pulling us down. So at some point we will stop in the air and come back down, right? So that's what happens. So how can we use the gravity in our game? How can we create gravity in our game? So here in our game, we have the velocity y that keeps pushing our uh, fruit up, right? Keep moving our fruit up constantly. So if we want to increase, uh, to add gravity to our game, we need something that will keep reducing this velocity y. Because once my velocity y will keep reducing, so let's say now it starts with 10, right? But then at some point it will be five, so my banana will be moving slower. And then at some point it will be two, then my banana will be even slower. And then at some point it will be zero, my banana will stop in the air, right? And then it will start going down. So minus two, so it will start dragging my banana down. So what we can do is we can keep updating the velocity y and applying gravity on the velocity y of our fruit. And then our fruit will do whatever it has to do, right? Go up and then fall. So if we're gonna keep applying gravity to our game, I'm gonna create another variable here, a variable for gravity. So how fast my, my fruit is gonna fall. So right now I'm gonna create a game.gravity variable. And this variable is gonna be equals to one for now. We probably have to change this value later, but one should be fine. And why am I using game dot on my variables name? Because I have to access this variable on the loop tab. So here on the loop tab, what I want to keep doing is I want to keep reducing my, my velocity with my gravity. So here on the loop tab, I'm gonna go to the end of this line. I'm gonna press enter to go uh, to other lines here. It doesn't matter if we skip lines. Uh, if we have many lines skipped here, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna skip one line to separate things a little bit so things are not uh, too close to each other, right? So here, what I want to keep doing is I want to keep reducing my velocity y, not my velocity y, but my game.velocity y, right? So here on the loop tab, I can say that my game.velocity y is gonna be my game.velocity y so here I'm increasing my bananas y. You can see that I say game.banana y is equals game.banana y plus game.velocity y. So here I'm increasing my bananas y with my game's velocity, right? Here I want to decrease my game's velocity with my game uh, gravity. So here I have my game's velocity minus my game.gravity, right? So you can see that now, whenever I press play, my banana goes up a little bit and then falls. That's because we have a velocity that it starts with 10 and then every loop, it will keep reducing my velocity in one, in one, in one, because my gravity values one, right? So at some point it will stop on the air and then at some point it will start falling down again. And that's how we can get these uh, physics on our game. But you can see that my, my banana doesn't go up that much. It just go a little bit and then fall, right? That's because uh, our velocity y starts with 10. So we start with just a few velocities. It's like you jump very uh, weak and then you just, you just leave the floor a little bit. But if you jump stronger, so if, if you jump with more velocity, so let me change here to 20, then you can go higher, right? So now you can see that my fruit goes a bit higher than before. And if I make it even bigger, my initial velocity, right? So if I start with 30, then my banana goes even higher, right? So on fruit slashers, 
our fruit will not start on the middle of the screen. It will start at the bottom of the screen. So it will, it will start outside of the screen here at the bottom. And then my fruit will jump, right? Come here in the screen and then fall back down. So I don't want to start my fruit in the middle of the screen. I will start my fruit here at the bottom of the screen. So after I set my bananas sprite, what I will do is I will change my bananas Y position so I can place my banana down here. So I create my banana, I change my bananas sprite, and I also change my bananas. So game.banana uh, dot y. So I'm changing my bananas y position to be equals. So if I want to bring it down, I, I have to decrease the value. So it starts in zero. So I'm going to do minus, let's see, 300. So if I put it on minus 300, you can see that now my banana starts down there but it's not starting outside of the screen yet. So I'm gonna bring it even more down, like 400, let's see, 400 maybe. Uh, let me try 450 maybe. So if I stop, stop and play my game, now my banana comes from the bottom of the screen, it jumps and then it falls, right? I can even give it here a bigger velocity Y so my banana can fly higher and there you go. So now we have a banana jumping on the screen and then falling back down, right? And we are using only two variables. We use the velocity y and the gravity. And we just have to use this game here so we can access these variables from the loop tab, right? That's pretty cool. So now what I want to do is I don't want to just have one banana jumping on my screen once I press start on my game. Actually, what I want to do is I want to keep creating more and more bananas, right? Because in Fruit Slashers, it doesn't create just one banana for us. It keeps creating many other fruits for us, right? And if you're gonna keep creating other fruits, I am gonna need a object to keep doing that for me or a class to keep doing that for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a class. So here on classes, I'll press on the plus button. And here I'm gonna create a class called spawner. So spawner, uppercase S for convention, right? Good practice. And I press OK. And now I have a class spawner here. And this spawner will be responsible for creating my fruits inside the game and keep spawning fruits every, let's say, one second or half a second or a quarter of a second, right? We can choose that number. All right, but now that I have my spawner, you can see that when I press play, I still doesn't have anything changed. Right, because I just created my class spawner. I haven't created my class inside my game yet. So here, what I can do on the start tab, I can create my spawner inside the game. So I'm gonna say that my fruits creator is a spawner. So I have a fruits creator that is a spawner, right? And whenever I press play, you can see that now I have my spawner created right in the middle of the screen for us. So before we, we keep going, I just want to talk about something. So here you can see that I used two words for the name of my variable. And whenever you're creating a variable, you can never do this. You can never use spaces on your variable. So what we do is we always put the two words together, but to not look uh, weird like this, you cannot know if these are word or three words or how many words are here, right? So we always start the second word with uppercase. And the first word always start with lowercase. So you can see that my gravity is lowercase, my velocity is lowercase, my banana is lowercase. But whenever you start with, uh, whenever you have two words in the same variable name, the second word start with uppercase. So now you can see that I have my fruit creator that is a spawner. And there it is inside my game, right? So what I want to do is because I don't want to uh, give a sprite to this spawner. So I don't really want to keep seeing this uh, blue square there, but I also don't want to give a sprite to this uh, spawner. So what I can do is it doesn't matter where my spawner is going to be. It can be here in the middle. It can be here on the top left. It can be here on the top right my fruits will always be created here on the bottom of the screen. So my spawner's position doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spawner outside of the screen so we don't have to see this blue square. So to do that, I'm just going to give it a big position on X or Y. So I can just say that my fruits creator dot X, I'm going to do, do it on X. So I'm going to say that this is equals 600. 
So 600 is okay. It hasn't even uh, moved my spawner outside of the screen yet. So I'm going to give it 800. So you can see that now my spawner went to the far right here and I cannot see my spawner anymore, right? My fruits creator anymore. But it's just outside of the screen, but it's not doing anything yet because we haven't coded anything with the fruits creator yet. But before we keep going with the spawner, we have a problem here that we have to fix. Because whenever I create a banana on the loop tab, I'm just moving my banana, right? I don't move any other thing. I just move my banana. So if I try here creating a second banana in my game, so let's say I create a game dot second banana, uh, banana inside my game. And this is also a fruit. You can see that even though my banana doesn't, my second banana doesn't have a sprite, it doesn't move at all, right? We can even try giving it a sprite. So you can say game dot second banana dot sprite is also a sprite from the file banana.png. Now that's clearly, uh, where is it? Uh, I have mistyped something here. The name, uh, the name of my variable should be uppercase on the B here. There we go. So now you can see that it is clearly another banana there, but it doesn't move like my first banana does, right? That's because we are just moving the game.banana. We are not moving the game.second banana, right? And our spawner is going to keep creating many, many, many fruits for us, right? We are not going to create two fruits or five fruits. We're going to create many fruits, right? It's like half a sec, a fruit every half a second. So if we play the game like one minute, we will have created many fruits. So there's no way for me to keep coding all the fruits here. So game.banana will move and then the game.second banana will also move and then the game third banana, you know, it's very bad for us to keep doing that. But there's a way easier way to do that. So the thing is, I have two bananas in my game now, right? And they are all fruits. And I know that all my fruits will behave like my first banana does. My first banana goes up and then it keeps, keeps going down with the gravity, right? So if I know that all my fruits will behave like that, then I can use my fruit class to code everything that my fruits will do. So you remember that on the first class, I said that the classes are basically behaviors, right? That we give to each thing in our game. So I'm gonna go inside my fruit here, my fruit class, and you can see that now I have brand new start and loop tabs. That's because my fruits also have a start and my fruits also have a loop. And anything that I put here on the start and loop tab, any fruit that I create, so here would be my game.banana and my game.second banana, both of them are fruits, right? So both would go here inside the fruit class and read all the code I have here. So if I want all my fruits to behave like my first banana does, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all that code inside here, inside my fruit class. So how can we do that? So first, I want all my fruits to start at the bottom of the screen. I don't want just my first banana to start there, but all my fruits to start at the bottom of the screen, right? So you can see that my banana starts in the bottom of the screen, but my second banana starts in the middle, right? So if I move this line there, where is it? Here. If I move this line here, okay, I will remove it from here. Now both bananas starts in the middle, right? But I'm gonna go inside my fruit class and here on the start tab, I'm gonna say that all the fruits start on the Y minus 450. How can I do that? So if I'm gonna say that all the fruits start on a certain Y position, I have to say self dot Y. So why self? Because self, is referring to fruit because we are coding side fruit. So I'm saying that all the fruits Y position will be minus 450. And this is on the start tab, right? So whenever a fruit is created inside the game, it will adjust its position to be minus 450. And now whenever I press play, you can see that both my bananas disappeared from the middle of the game, right? We have our first banana that moves up and down. 
but the second banana is not moving. It's stopped down there. You can see that if I changed, uh, if I changed this y to 300, for example, minus 300, I mean, you can see that the other banana stayed there. So both bananas are fruits, right? And they all behave the same way. And for now, they are starting on the position minus 300 on y. So what I want to do now is I want to have all my fruits jumping up and falling down like my first banana does as well, right? So this we're going to do on the next class. So for now, just make sure you save your game and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.